Hello, welcome to G2G, a program where we discover the lives of highly successful and high profile people who, despite the incredible success they have in their careers, have an equally awe inspiring and courageous story to tell about their faith. My name is Brian Tran and I'm your host for today. And we're going to meet with Tomislav Uspok, an A-League football player signed with the MacArthur Bulls FC with a high profile career who's learning to balance his career with his faith life. I welcome you today to learn more about Tomislav Uskok. My name is Tomislav Uskok and I am a professional soccer player here in Australia in the A-League. I've been doing that for numerous years now. I've got a family of four uh, beautiful children and wife. Along with my job and work and sport and my family, I try to be a devout Catholic father and husband and um, that's where it's leading me. Tomislav, uh, welcome to G2G. Uh, it's your first time here. We're so excited to have you join us today. First off, thanks, Brian, uh, for having me. It's an honor to be here. Tommy, tell us a bit about your childhood and how you were brought up. Um, were your parents devout Catholics? Um, what was that like for you growing up? I'm of a Croatian background, yep. um, so we're pretty uh, strong numbers in the Catholic faith, if you want to call it, like the Croatian population. I think it's 90-something percent. And obviously, coming to Australia, they continued that and built a lot of churches um, throughout Australia. Um, I grew up in Melbourne, so I went to a Catholic church, a uh, Catholic school there, primary school. And yeah, my, we attended Mass every Sunday um, as a family. Yeah, we grew up in a Catholic household and uh, my grandmother was probably a big part of, of that. She taught me how to pray when I was young. I lived with her a long time. Um, she was very influential in my faith life and um, thanks be to God that, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful childhood. And I, I read somewhere, Tommy, that... Uh your father was a huge inspiration in your soccer. Yeah. Um, and I heard that he was a player himself um, and also was a huge fan of the game. Yeah. Um, how did he inspire you to, um, like in terms of your career today? He was always there for me. Despite working 12 hour shifts every day to survive, to help us, he'd always be there to take me to soccer. And um, you know, even smaller before I started playing, you know, just he used to play, going there and watching him and being around his team and then taking us on Sundays after church to watch Melbourne Knights. I grew up in that environment and even to this day, after games, I call him and we speak, uh, what do you think of this and how did I go and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, he's, he's still so very influential in my career. Thomas Uskok, what a time to deliver. Tommy Uskok. Tommy, back to your, um, your childhood, um, you know, you said that you, you were very much um, inspired by your grandmother. You were going to Sunday Masses. Um, along the way, somewhere in your teenage years, um, something happens and, and their faith um, just kind of dissipates slowly. Um, was there an event? Was there something that kind of um, caused that for you? If I'm going to be completely frank, no, it wasn't. I can't recall a time that it, this happened or that happened. Slowly, just start fading. Yeah. Um, you know, sports starts coming first on a weekend. You've got to play on a Sunday. You can't go to church now. And if I'm being completely honest, that's all really, you know. And, and then you start, it becomes a habit of not going. And then you, you're you fallen well away from the church, you know. I understand it can be difficult life, yeah. especially in, in Australia and Sydney where we live. It's busy, man. Like life's busy. Yeah. And we can make excuses for everything we want. Where do we prioritise our lives? Is it God first or is it everything else first? So I would just say, where does he stand in your life, basically? Um, and you have to look inside of yourself and say, okay, he's important to me, he's number one, or he's behind the rest. I think that's for a lot of people as well. For most people, they don't really, like they don't have a big event that's happened, yeah. a traumatic event that caused them to walk away, but rather many, many small little events uh, or little decisions that kind of where they prioritize something else in their life, whether it's their career. I mean, this is not abnormal. I'd say this is the, 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 the normal, like this is what's happening in the world today. After this period where your, your faith started to dissipate, 
what was that reawakening point? Was there a point in your life when you, you suddenly maybe came back to church and realized that you were missing out on all, all these years of mass? Or what was it for you? Basically my wife now. She was always, um, her and her family were always devout and faithful Catholics. Yep. Honestly, it was just that. Like I started dating her at the time and do you want to come? Let's, I'm going to mass on Sunday. I'll have to impress the girl. <laughs> I can't say no. So you just slowly start going and slowly just creeps inside of you. You get a feeling that, yeah, I actually want to go. And you feel like you missed out a long time in, you know, in, in the process. But thanks be to God that I found a beautiful wife that has led me back to, to the faith, man, because, yeah, it could get pretty ugly otherwise, yeah. And t- tell me about the relationship with your, with, between you and your wife and, and um, now that you have four children, what does that look like? How are you navigating uh, being a Catholic husband and a father? We just have to stick together and keep our prayer life strong together um, and just pray for, for, the, for the right decisions and discern on the right decisions all the time, man. It's, um, and just stay patient with each other. Yeah. Um, so easy to, to, to get angry and lose, lose your mind over little things and, and let things build up, but um, just keep on track and keep on the journey. I think that's really good advice. I mean, the patience is a big thing. Man, Tommy Oscock who invented the finish. I want to talk a bit about your, your career, uh, being a professional athlete, being in the limelight, being in the public light, you know, with many people looking up to you. How do you live out your Catholic faith in the professional context? It can be difficult, um, but I think if you stay, I pray for humility and um, all the time just to stay humble and because you can get ahead of yourself, um, even though we're not Premier League players or playing the World Cup, you're still professional athletes and, you know, you could get ahead of yourself and think, oh, maybe I'm a bit better than what I am or I'm doing it on my own accord. Yeah. Um, you just try to stay grounded, man, and, and keep your prayer life up, pray the rosary. And there's always opportunities to grow in, yeah. in my career. Um, sometimes you might be picked, sometimes you're not. Yep. And what do you do when you're not picked? How do you act? Are you upset? Are you angry? Are you taking it out on people? Do I come home and bring it to my family? Um, has there been um, a time in your career where you felt like you really had to take a stand for your faith, like maybe um, to stand up for what you believe at all? Have you ever felt like there, to be challenged uh, yeah. to stand up for your faith? I'm lucky enough that I've got a, a player that plays with me and a very close friend. Um, we constantly have conversations about abortion, about... Um, was a gay marriage and um, LGBTQ issues and all sorts of things like that. Um, and we just say it, what we believe and what the church teaches. Yeah, wow. Um, I've learned along the way because I'm definitely not good at this. I could be quite confrontational sometimes and <laughs> get quite angry. And so I think it's a creation inside of me. It can be challenging because all those human uh, emotions come out. Yeah. Um, but we try to reiterate that we're not perfect. We're not pretending to be perfect. Uh, we just want to share what we believe and what we believe is the truth yep. um, and understand our point of view, you know, and you might think you're right, but just listen to us and hear us yep. um, because I think it's important to be merciful still um, to other people and loving and to show that you care for them as a person yeah. um, and not just label them as what they believe and that is the person. It it can be tricky, but I mean, I think the longer the time's gone on, people are a bit more open and respectful to our opinions, to feel certain things in certain situations when you're getting hassled and attacked on all ends. But that's where we have to pray for guidance and and the Holy Spirit just to come and, and give us the words that we need at the time. You know, I just see around, like when we look on the news, we see so much emphasis in today's society being put on wealth, being put on um, fame as the measures of success. You're in the public sphere, you're a public figure, professional athlete. You're really answering to all of these, 
uh, of society's definitions of success in many ways. H how do you keep grounded in your faith? I don't identify as a soccer player or a football player. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's the measure of me as a man or you can, you can get in your head and make you believe that, yeah. you know, if I'm playing well or if I'm playing in this team, well, that measures me in my masculinity, in my success. Um, but I think if you just look deeper, and I try to do this, and it can be difficult. Um, okay, what's my measure of, of a man? Um, I'm God-fearing, a good father and husband. I'm trying to teach my faith to my children, take them to church, pray with them. That's my definition of myself or my identity, not the football. So I think that can get crossed over. Yeah. Um, and that's where a lot of people identify as, you know, in my wealth, in my money. And if I don't have that anymore, well, then I'm nothing anymore. Well, you are still, yeah. but you're choosing to make everything about that and that you're God, basically. You can really get caught up in that uh, success or your role in, in, a, in your work yeah. more so than the rest of your life. So I think that's what people get confused with. So my message would be don't get it twisted. Try to be a professional athlete, it's fantastic. Yeah. Asceticism, discipline, fitness, that are skills and attributes that will help you in life. But God first. I'd like you to talk a bit more about that actually. You know, what are your daily habits in relation to your faith uh, that help you um, stay grounded and especially through times of aridity? So obviously prayer, as soon as I wake up, um, yeah. consecrating my day, um, to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Immaculate Heart of Mary and praying for the Pope's intentions um, every morning. Um, I pray the Rosary, Divine Mercy Chaplet, um, Angelus every day. When I can, um, I try to get to Mass before training um, and evening prayer as well before. And so I'm lucky as well because when I do go to Mass in the morning, they uh, pray the Liturgy of the Hours in the morning as well. Beautiful. With the Mass, so... That's another little form of prayer that I get in, and yeah. it's an amazing. There is so much to unpack to what you just said. Yeah. How the sacraments have um, have played a, a role in that program, in that spiritual journey for you, and how being close to the church, the Catholic Church, um, has really helped um, in in kind of defeating those vices. It's been everything, if I'm being completely yeah. honest. Um, being able to receive the the body and blood of Christ at Mass the ultimate pinnacle of yeah. everything in life, um, of confession, you know, to, to wash away our sins um, and his mercy and love for us. It doesn't matter how far we fall, he's there to pick us up again. Yep. And it took me a long time to, um, to understand that, you know, I'm still not worthy. I'm still not worthy. It doesn't matter if I've been to confession. I'm not good enough. Like, I just did it a week ago. Yeah. I did it again. But it's important to that we frequent those sacraments. For me, it's been everything. And I, I'm lucky enough to have a, a couple great confessors um, that really give me some great advice and, yep. and uh, help me along the journey and spiritual directors and stuff like that, so. It's been a few years now, I think, and I just make handmade paracord Rosaries for men. I feel like a lot of the time rosaries are very small and intricate and delicate and for, you know, those female hands and in the end it's a weapon, it's a spiritual weapon. And I felt like men needed something to feel, to make them want to pray more basically. And if they have something strong and um, masculine, I felt it anyway that I was like, wow, I, I want to pray more. So that's why I targeted men specifically, because I want men to pray the rosary more. There's a stigma associated with the rosary. It's always those old ladies. Yeah. If you go to, into morning masses, you see those old ladies coming early to pray the rosary. It's never really a, a, what you would consider, or at least society would consider, a very um, masculine kind of thing to do. Aware that you've actually started a, uh, a really beautiful apostolate uh, with beaded armor. Can you tell us a bit about beaded armor and how that got started? It's funny how it all started during COVID. Um, my daughter got a little craft kit sent over to our house and um, had little beads and little rope and all sorts of stuff. And 
And I was sitting with her and I said, oh, let's make a rosary for some reason or another. I made, you know, made a little. I had one, uh, a quite a thick rosary from America. And, and I said, you know, I feel like I've got to, I've got to do this. Um, I had something inside of me and um, I started that and it's been going great. Over a thousand rosaries at least. And you go to church, it's the old ladies and all sitting there quietly and praying the rosary. And that's why I wanted to make something for men specifically. I feel masculine. I still feel like a man. And it is manly to pray the rosary. Yep. It's not feminine. It's lead your family in it. You be the head of the house and you start praying the rosary and see what happens in your family. When we feel tempted, when we feel anxious or whatever it may be, it is a weapon, you know, for us men. And the more we see it like that, I believe the more efficiently we'll use it. The world's selling us all the sorts of, um, of role models that aren't really worthy of being role models. And, and a lot of young boys, teenagers, they're growing up watching online these role models it's about how many women you can have. It's about how much money you can have. It's about driving the Lamborghini. Uh, it's about drinking yourself to death. What do you say to these young boys? I mean, obviously don't do that, but what do you say to these young boys in terms of finding themselves inspired by these characters and where would they find the source of true masculinity? The source and summit is Jesus Christ, isn't it? He sacrificed himself on the cross. Didn't have to, did he? In the end, he was God himself come down, sent his son, sacrificed his own blood and body on the cross. That for me is masculinity, sacrifice. Yeah. Sacrifice for your family, sacrifice for others around you, strong men in this life. You know, the, these guys, Andrew Tates and all these sorts of stuff, it's going to lead you to something and you're going to fall right off, man, because it, yeah. there's, there's no substance to it suicide attempts and drug addictions and, and all these sorts of stuff. And it's so sad because they've got everything. Yep. But they're still missing something because it's not the summit of life, man. Like that's it's not the be all end all. You're still, you're still searching. Yeah. These guys driving their Lamborghinis and Bugattis and these guys with highly successful corporate careers and women and all this kind of stuff. And you think that's where I'm going to feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I'm going to feel my heart. Yeah. Uh, but it's... Oftentimes, unfortunately, it's when men get there that they realize that the whole, the whole journey was to the wrong destination. Right, yeah. uh, how do I give glory to God? I thank Him for everything. And I know that without Him, I wouldn't be in this situation where I am. And if it's He that wants me to play football and gave me these gifts, I thank Him for that every day. If he wants me to do something else, well, that's his plan for me as well. And I still give thanks to him. I try to every day give thanks and honour to him for the gifts that he has given me, because without that, I wouldn't be able to play football. Tommy, when I hear your story, when I look at your, your career, you know, you're obviously at the top of your game. You're at the pinnacle of your career. You have the career that millions of young people in the world they dream of having you know, a professional career in sports. Reflecting on your career and comparing that to the fact that uh, God had everything. He, had, he was the creator of the universe, but yet he came down out of love for man uh, and, and Jesus became man so that we could become like God, so that we can be like mini Christ in a way, share that love to the world. So what do you have to say about uh, about this image of God coming down as man for us. Yeah, I think we can use that image as a, uh, a reference for us to imitate Christ in our lives, in our virtues, in how we act, in our sacrifice for our families, for our loved ones, and giving all glory to Him because He laid down His life for us and we can sacrifice little bits every day for our loved ones. It's not so much always doing something massive, but small sacrifices every day. Well, I love that. I, I think not everyone can do big things, yeah. but everyone can do small things, you know, with great love. Tommy, it's been a pleasure having you here. I'm very inspired by your story, and I'm, I'm sure many, many people watching this feel the same way. 
thank you so much for your time and thank you for being on G2G. Thanks for having me. God bless you. God bless. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to this episode of G2G. Such an amazing um, journey in his career, but most importantly, um, how he's balanced that career with his faith life and his family life. I mean, oftentimes we identify ourselves with our career, our success, money, fame. But what Tommy was sharing with us was that the most important identity we have that underlies them all is our identity as a child of God. And once that's in place, all the other things will fall into place. I'm Brian Tran and your host. Thank you so much once again for joining us. God bless you and I hope to see you again soon.